Next question is from Illa Ganke. Uh, how can you spot a good at-home workout plan versus a poorly planned one? Almost everything I've seen online has me doing burpees until my <laughs> knees give out. That's a great. This is a good question. Okay, so it, here's a bad. Here's some characteristics of a bad at home workout plan. Uh, it's not phased. It is a hundred percent completely circuit based. So it's just a bunch of exercises thrown together. It includes lots of jumping and bounding, jumping, bounding, uh, jumping side to side, jumping over a chair. Those, you know, explosive movements like that, you'll see that in our programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has its place, uh, but, you know, you you have have to to maintain. Yeah, Uh, you have to be advanced and you have to do the work, like uh, leaning into that. And then also, like, uh, you know, make sure you you focus on the intent of, uh, you know, what you're trying to get out of it. Yes, um, they don't incorporate rest periods properly. So it's just, it's just cardio, you know, just cardio with your body. You're not really doing any resistance training. Um, They don't have a stability or excuse me or tension uh component you know uh isometrics applied properly require no equipment and are extremely effective and valuable when you combine them with body weight exercise if you have an at-home workout program that it doesn't incorporate any isometrics or stability movements with your body weight movements then you know it was written by somebody that doesn't understand how to make uh, an equipment free or minimal equipment uh, program effective. Well, this is what inspired Maps Anywhere. Like every program that we done years ago, we we talked, uh, you know, a lot of Mind Pump early on before we had all the programs was us pointing out all different modalities and things that we saw in the space. And probably one of the most abused uh, workouts is at-home workouts. Um, They're the and, worst programmed. Yeah, I mean, and to take a, a shot right at some uh, a big company, you're talking about a, a multi-billion dollar company, Beachbody, which is primarily uh, at-home workouts, and it's solely based off of intensity and look. It's all- Entertainment. Yeah, it's all entertainment. It's geared towards marketing to uh, demographics of people that will identify with the person who's leading the class, and then it's just intensity-based, and it's just a bunch of random exercises that are put together with no sort of rhyme or reason that are designed to kick your ass or make you sweat, and that's not effective programming. I don't give a shit if you're in home or in the gym- that's poor programming. And so us addressing that, talking about that, of course, our response to that is, okay, if we were going to write an at-home program that is scaled up correctly and then also has the flexibility for the level of fitness, because that's so important. When you're talking about at-home workout, you get a very wide range of people that are taking that. Everything from a brand new beginner you know, to a 60-year-old lady who's never worked out before, to somebody who's advanced in traveling because they're on the go and they're a businesswoman or man, and they just need to get a workout inside their hotel room. So we had to take that all into consideration. Like, how do we build a program that's scalable for all levels of fitness, but then is also programmed knowing that, hey, there could be somebody too who's coming into this as very beginning or at 60 years old. How do they have it effective? That was what... And there's a lot of variables that you just don't see people use with... uh, And you mentioned isometrics. And I think that that was one that really caught my attention a long time ago just because it was so underutilized and it was so effective. And uh, the the strength gains are are beyond just the angle that you're actually uh, applying these. It actually cascades in a little bit further. uh, And you get stronger in, in, in you know in even further range of motion, and so there's just lots of benefit to it, and also it's very safe, so you can ramp up and really get an intense workout uh, and get that same kind of a feel with your central nervous system, but less damage. And so why would why would we not highlight that as well as rubber bands that also provide like that same type of stimulus, but now you know the damage uh, by itself is lower yeah, substantially. If you look at all the categories of workout programs. The, the category that has the worst workout programming, the worst written exercises, the worst written workouts are the at-home workouts by far. If I, I mean, there's, there's bad workout programming all the way around, but when I look at, at like, you know, workout at gym workout programs or barbell and dumbbell based programs, a, a larger percentage, a much larger percentage of those I would say are written a l- better. The at-home workout programs, I have never actually ever seen an at-home, well-written, popular at-home workout program. They're terrible. There's a couple reasons for that. One is the audience that they're targeting. They're targeting 
people who don't want to go to the gym, just want to work out at home. They know it's more average, regular, everyday, you know, Joe people who don't know the difference between a good and a bad workout. They just want to sweat at home. And if they're sore, then they think it's a good workout. And how do you market to them? I'm going to make it flashy, make it entertaining. I'm going to call it, you know, urban cowboy workout or, yeah. you know, Pilates, <laughs> yeah. you know, Pilates combat training or something weird, you know, combinations like that. And it's just terrible uh, workout program. The second reason, and I'm this is 100% true, and, and if you're a trainer with a lot of experience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to design a good workout program without, I mean a good, a well-made one that's going to pro, you know, produce good results, it's going to be appropriate, it's a lot, It's scalable, meaning somebody as a beginner can continue to do this as they get stronger and more fit, or somebody could enter into it as an intermediate and advanced and still get great results. That requires way more knowledge and creativity when you don't have a lot of equipment. Mm. If I have tons of equipment, I still need to know what I'm doing. But you know, if I'm thinking of back exercise, I have you know 15 different options. When I'm thinking, oh, we don't have much equipment, we have a band yeah. uh, or maybe a pull-up bar. Like, okay, what are some of the movements I can do for correcting upper, you know, uh, posture or strengthening the back, or how am I going to work the glutes? Uh, effectively when I don't have any equipment or the quads or what about the calves or what about, you know, the shoulders, you know, I don't have anything I can press overhead. So how am I going to give this person a great workout with different angles? It requires more experience, more creativity, and you just, it's just harder to do. So a lot of the program you see at home, it's just terrible. Yeah. I know you guys have been seeing like lots of uh, hilarious ideas, like creativity wise out there, what to do with it. Like, my favorite, my personal favorite, I have to share this, uh, was <laughs> this was technically, I guess it was a squatter. They were trying to target their, their glutes, but they had their hands up in the air like this. They'd squat down, they come and then they do like a, a side bend sort of trying to get their oblique to crunch and then lift their leg oh up at the same time <laughs> with their arms up in the air like jazz hands. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, let's well, combine five different exercises. I mean, the, the person who's asking this question has probably already got a pretty good idea because the fact that you you notice that right away that many of these programs just throw burpees in there. And the reason why you see that in <laughs> yeah. these workouts is, is it's an easy like a way. burpee button. It's such an easy way to elevate a client's heart rate and make the workout feel hard. Yeah. Yeah. If you do 30 burpees and then you go to do a push up, a lunge, a squat, any other body weight movement, it's hard because yeah. you just did 30 burpees. Well, this is a, a time tested trick. It's just the same trick that parallels like supplements where they want you to feel something right away and then, then you think it's working because I feel it. Like intensity is yeah. something that is overused because I feel it. So therefore, this is good. Yeah. It used to be back in the day, jumping jacks, then burpees became. Look, if you have, a at, if you have an at home workout program that includes burpees and it's not an OCR, training program. It's right. probably a bad program. It's right, probably right. a crappy program. Right. The only time burpees, not the only time, but for the most part, the only time burpees are pro appropriately programmed are when you're training for obstacle course racing where burpees is part of the competition. Right. Uh, other than that, if you see it in your program, it's probably a There's crappy something program. high intense, but you got, yeah, the intent has to be there. Well, and to, we're hammering intensity, but I want to make it clear too, though, that it doesn't mean that a, uh, like an at-home workout won't be, it, it can't be really challenging. Really challenging, and then just laying into the intensity uh, without any sort of real thought behind the program. Well, you know, two lazy. different things. Yeah, because yeah, you can make. Uh, I mean, how often do you guys get tagged in Maps Anywhere workouts where people are like, "Oh my God, that kicked my butt. That was hard." Sure. So yeah, it, it it definitely can be hard. But here's here's another way too that's uh, is more simple for the person who doesn't understand what we're talking about with programming and exercise design. They're like, "Okay, I feel like you still didn't answer me." If you feel like when you're done. You got more of a cardiovascular workout from it than you got like a mm -hmm. muscle building workout. And like you should feel a good muscle pump, muscle soreness from the next day, more so than you feel like I just ran a mile. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what a lot of these these at home workouts are. They're just they're a bunch of exercises put in a circuit with low rest periods. And really what that is is just more like cardio. It's less like it's more anaerobic than it is anabolic. You're not sending this big muscle building signal when you're not giving any rest period and you're constantly going from exercise to exercise. Yeah, if you, and here's the thing, aerobic yeah. doesn't require a lot of programming. It's actually not that hard. If you want to yeah, improve- jump rope. Your, yeah. yeah, you want to improve your aerobic capacity, then go you know, hike up a hill or do some sprints or jump in place. Yeah. You're going to get some of that. You don't need workout programming for that. But when it comes to- building muscle, speeding up the metabolism, sculpting the body where you can actually shape the body because you're working and building muscle, that requires uh, more programming. And I'll, I'll say I'll make this challenge all day long. 
I would put maps anywhere up against any at home workout program. And I would a hundred, I'm fully confident it would be superior to 99.9% .9 of the ones that I've seen what's out there. Mm -hmm. I've almost, I've never looked at an at home program and said, wow, that was written. Well, it's never, almost never happened. We just need an infomercial.